first, my name is Kenneth Bird. My company is Black Series Edition LLC with Crystal Age Technology Screens and FLE BT Technology. We're going to be talking about the benefits of our FLE. This is the Alpha Cinemax technology uh, versus a white surface or white screen or when it's called in the day. Mine, the surface behind is actually white too. This is uh, my um, background drop. So we can show you how amazing this technology is going to look. Now, um, one of the things that came up in a couple of form sites we're in is basically the black technology versus um, white levels versus the white screen. Um, is the uh, black technology going to turn dark? It's going to become unwatchable. Well, let's show the white levels first. So let's start off with the LG snowboarding demonstration. And then we'll go from there. Now, real quick in the demonstration, again, I always find the projector because people always ask me what projector we're using. We're using our Sony VPO FH30, yeah, projector, 4,000 lumens. And for those of you saying, what is a 4,000 lumen projector? Keep in mind that the white surface is also being hit with 4,000 lumens also. And we just did this demonstration at 50 lumens a few minutes ago. back a little bit That's the transition, being the change from one to the next. Let's go with the 4K Snow Cottage. Getting that from YouTube. Okay, Snow Cottage, night time. Now, this half, I'm probably going to do with the lights out. Next half, we're going to do the lights on, but I'm going to do that tomorrow because we've done too many demonstrations already. 
but I have to do these on YouTube and these demonstrations are also ported over to Facebook on the form site so kind of shoot one video for two different places because this is one of the things that came up a lot when it came to the white screen well you know what hey I turn the lights out I'm not gonna see a difference at all I don't see why I should spend the money for your product because again you're really not going to show me a benefit there at all I'm gonna be in the dark anyway uh, 4,000 lumens we're in the dark and guess what you won't read it where's that Halloween one at? that nice Halloween one Christmas College Halloween. I'm curious how that one even pulls up. Oh. Christmas Cottage Halloween screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. Oh, it actually worked. That's a Christmas Halloween cottage. Figure that one out. So when I tell you that the white screen doesn't read contrast, doesn't make a difference what projector you buy, you just can't see it. dark environment is bugging the daylights out of me. I tell you, I'm not used to being in this much darkness all day. I'm really not used to it. Hopefully not going to be in there all day. Let my lights on. We should have the one for what the heck is this? Christmas cottage screensavers. Is another one of those white levels? What's this one? Oh, they had a whole bunch of these on here. What the freak? Oh, goody, goody. Come, I'll be dying to find white levels. I'll tell you something right there. Friends, you're the ones who made Delaney Academy a real success. It was our life. And when you basically at the end of the day be hunting for white levels, I mean, that does develop black screens. We don't look for all contrasts. Oh, what's the point of that? It's no fun in that. Screen already generates a black level. We need to find white levels as many as we can. These are fantastic for presentations. What if they got one brighter? That's a lot of blue in it. They're not even super bright, super bright, bright, white, white, white levels. I mean, that's pretty cool. What about this one? Eh, same thing. A lot of blue in it. Not too happy with that. I mean, it's still something, but still too much blue. Uh, all right. What are these called anyway? Oh, they have just the same person who makes these. That's another one. They had a bunch of these. All right, let's go with some uh, some colors. We got the red over here. See so if the red pops up. Blue screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. Green screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. A bunch of colors down here we can use purple yellow screensaver getting that from YouTube orange screensaver getting that from YouTube if you want a solid orange oh that would be orange right there that's a dark orange oh, pretty nice you see, doesn't read it. Worse, just gray screens don't read as it is. White screens are the worst. They don't read for jack at all. Period. Nothing. Not a zilch. Not a thing. And again, we're over on the form sites. A lot of people have white screens over there and these really crazy high power projectors. And they're saying, well, you know, with the lights out, I'm really not going to see a difference. And I'm telling you, yes, you are going to see a difference. 
Put it next to a more superior technology, you will see a big, big difference. You stick this stuff next to any gunmetal screen, you'll see a difference. If you put it next to a gray screen, you're going to see a difference. You're definitely going to see a difference with a white screen on anything you put it against. If you put, and think about it, what is the most superior color in contrast you're going to receive from your projector you paid all that money for? It's going to come off a black screen because a gray screen can't read either. It can read it better than the white screen, but it still can't read it. Let's go pick up somebody's nebula. Ordinary is the opposite of beautiful. So biggest lie and projection screens when it comes to it is that your projector with all its bells and whistles is going to fix the white screen worries and it's not. Same thing with the grays. It's not going to fix it. Got metal? That's going to be expensive fix, but it's not going to fix it because again, you still have to accept the 100% black level. And that's why I said I had that conversation from sun up to sun down, where they're telling me at the end of the day, well, you know, you really don't need black levels. Then why would you have it in your projector then? So you don't need red. We don't need all those colors in there. They're not needed. So red should be purple and purple should be orange and green should be yellow and yellow should be pink. That'd be messed up, wouldn't it? That'd be the most worst image you would have ever seen. So, if that's the case, how come black is gray? So even in the dark, your colors don't work. Starfield screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. White screens are not ambient light rejection, just a little bit of light, and they're going. Just from the straight, a little bit of light. That's all it takes. Red screen. Getting that from YouTube. That's why when you watch those demonstrations on Amazon, and they had those white screens where the whole entire family is huddled around the screen, and they're showing it in this fully lit environment, and they're pulling up all these big, beautiful reds, and greens, and blue colors, and all that stuff, and they're saying, this is what you're going to get off the screen. No, you're not. You can't read any of that. That's virtually impossible. There's a little bit of light right here. You can't read it. I'm going to go buy me one of those screens that does the demonstration, you know, about the whole family sitting around and they got the lights on and it's like you can use that screen in a full environment, especially when you're using the AI technology to make it look like you're watching you can watch a movie and all that light, that cartoon kind of look to it and show you it's it's not going to work it's never going to work at all period you can't pick it up if you can't pick it up in here you're definitely not picking up in that demonstration they just put you in all right let's get a couple more we we'll finish we did the white levels all the good stuff oh real quick snow cottage screensaver getting that from youtube <laughs> Those people don't have to be trapped in the dark all day. You should literally be to do this on your screen. I can change the contrast, colors, white levels, without adjusting anything in the environment. Just like this. So for most people, when I came to a door and I walked in my home, when I walk in my home, guess what I do? I have a 158 inch glass screen set up. I have windows that are next to my screen because I actually push this through my screen from time to time. Do I go into my place and turn out the lights and darken the environment? Nope. I go in and hit my screen, it comes on, go in the kitchen and make something, hit the screen lights over top, and I'm done. Just like I'm doing here. My lights are far brighter than the place I'm at right now because these are commercial lights. I'm in a workshop. 
So when I come in here, all I got to do is I have my projector back there. I come into the door. I hit the projector. It comes on and it hits that screen right there. I turn my projector on for my work, for my, um, my screen over here for doing my office work. I don't have to turn anything out in this environment when I work. So if you have to darken your environment to use your screen, then there's a problem there. Like I said, the biggest lie I see with the white screen is the fact that it's the biggest lie either we tell ourselves or someone told us is that the projector, if you buy enough contrast, if you buy a high enough lumen count, if you buy millions and millions of colors, we get 4K, 4K high resolution, that that image, or what that projector is designed to do, it's going to push into our screen. You're going to pick up this amazing image. Not even close. Not even close. If I buy a projector with a high enough lumen count, I can get around all this ambient light and produce an image. Now, that's what the people thought when they had a 7,000 lumen projector trying to hit a screen about a thousand inches, that that projector was going to work, and it didn't. It's interesting how this old projector we have here and its glory days, I watched the demonstrations on these projectors in their glory days, they were all displayed off white screens, every last one of them. The sad thing about it is, and I said this before, the people who developed this technology never understood the true potential of what they had. You know why? Because they shortchanged it on a white screen. So this same projector right now, if it was hitting a white screen, which we're looking at right now, say my screen's not even here, it's not there at all. They would think they were picking up this amazing image, beautiful contrast and colors and everything, and they weren't picking up Jack. Now, take the same projector, many years later, it's discontinued, and look at the image compared to the white surface that they did the test on the projector when they designed it. They never ever saw the true potential of their product's technology because they shortchanged it on a white screen. This is why we can appeal to projector companies, we can appeal to projection screen companies, we can appeal to everybody. I can get an exclusive contract for designing technology for these projectors because we can design project screens that would make their projectors look absolutely beast and any kind of showcase. Even though their projector has a 2 million, 10 million, whatever it is, they'll never read it on a white screen. On our technology, they won't even need it. Yep. So that's another company that can come and buy us out. They can have their own projection screens, which they're doing already, that goes with their own projectors. And they don't have to spend a ton of money to build these machines because their screen will do all the work. Why add in thousands and thousands of dollars to put in a 10,000, 20,000, 2 million, 5 million, 50 million to one contrast? You don't even have to do that. Your screen's black. Not required. Has a ton of ambient light technology attached to it, which means you don't have to use high lumen projectors to fix it. This thing can operate on an ultra short throw projector of a thousand lumens and even under. We had a customer came in with a Philips ultra short throw projector at 900 lumens and he was able to run it. So you don't need all that in the day, so that makes the projector far cheaper. Do you need 4K to run it? Actually, no, because the screen black, it has the most detail and depth that you will ever have at the end of the day. It makes 720p, so absolutely incredible, mind you. Demonstration at 250 inches at 27 feet back was stretched to that size. It wasn't even designed for that size. And we were able to get that image crystal clear and sharp at 720p at 250 at 27 feet. So that's not needed either. So how much money do you think you have to pay for the projector now? It'd be pretty cheap, wouldn't it? There you go. That's how much that technology changes. So, they figure that where we're at right now, doing demonstrations out of houses, our house, and this, that, and the other, you know, that's as far as we want to go. That's why the next stage for my technology is to bring it on site, which means when they see that technology popping up in all these different locations, 
I'm going to have crowds of people looking at that technology. When I'm on YouTube, I have whoever logs in, they can see it. But imagine when you're on site, every passerby is going to see that technology. And they're going to talk and they're going to talk. Talking is best advertisement. The screen's going to blow up by the end of this summer. Ad tech is going to push everything through the roof. And then you're going to have people investing the money in the technology because they know they can make a ton of money off of it. And they want to push us in different shows and events and all that. We've got to, Actually, we've got a person that's coming in who's going to be doing a lot of our planning for getting us in shows and stuff. Now, we blessed to pop up at one of those shows. And that black screen comes in there. What do you think those gunmetals are going to do at the end of the day when they see that technology staring right back at them? Can't talk about contrast. That screen is contrast. What about your expensive projectors? We're not using expensive projectors. That means the customer doesn't have to spend a lot of money. Our booths have 10 times more light than your booth. I can run this thing in a booth, in a booth with this much light hitting it. When you cry about lights, 21 feet in the air plaguing your screen, and this thing is sitting right up underneath these lights and not having a problem, yeah, there's an issue. And we're going to have two demonstrations, one's inside and one outside. One on ultra short throw, one next to TVs. They're not doing those demonstrations. So everybody's going to be at our booth, consider the fact that our screens are black alone by themselves. And we're using these old beat up projectors. When I come in there, I'm not coming there with a brand new looking projector. I'm going to bring the most dirtiest, disgusting old projector with stickers all over it and everything. It's going to look like a hot mess. I want them to look at it. I want them to laugh about our stuff. Oh, you got a black screen. How the heck is that going to look at the projectors? That's you know, so outdated. Who would do something that old? You ever heard of the Trojan horse? Never judge a book by its cover. You'd be surprised how much power it has. When that screen fires up, I'm going to tell them right from the door. Don't lay your technology against it because you were in your company. So you have to understand the whole purpose of the uh, the gunmetal technology is to produce much darker contrast levels and to be the pool in fully lit environments. But when you have a screen that's actually physically black, there's no way to beat it. So, yeah, they'll be the ones to try to buy us out. But we're not into that. The whole point of me developing my technology is so, or God's technology, is so that we can actually have cheaper, more affordable screens so the everyday Joe who doesn't have deep enough pockets to spend $3,000 for a screen and not spend an additional $2,000 or whatever for a projector and still have to be stuck in a dark environment, still have to be calibrated, don't get cheated at the end of the day. They don't get ripped off. That's the whole purpose of it all. A lot of people are fighting against us because they don't want to see it happen, but it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. For our pass off the surface, it's definitely going to happen. And hopefully, somebody else will pick up the torch and finish where I started from. So, when you hear me on it, I don't talk about, oh, I'm going to make millions, about millions of dollars, but my money is not for that. My more money my company churns out, the more I'm going to push in a different direction. I want to do a lot of great things at the end of the day. Why should the everyday joy that works hard should not have something enjoyable? Why does he have to sit there and spend all this money for you? If you don't have the screen, then you just don't have the screen. You can't afford it, then it's your problem at the end of the day. Why has it got to be that way? Why can't I have an amazing home theater? I got to have deep pockets to have all that. It's not fair at the end of the day. The have and have nots. So, we decided to come in and level the playing field. So, I'm working on basically getting our products to a point where I want everybody to be able to afford to be able to have them. I mean, right now we're at a, we, the lowest, cheapest kit we have right now is we dropped, like I said, we did a price reduction because I want to have affordable screens, really affordable screens. So, the cheapest kit we have is the 16 ounce. And that's around right now 150 something dollars and that's what we use to paint this surface right here we use 16 and less, that's less than 16 ounces to paint this surface i did it on camera and had enough left over to put into a paint a paint cannon and spray whatever we wanted with it 
just think how much this technology is going to change. Your computer junkies at the end of the day, you like gaming at the end of the day, you don't have to spend the money for monitors. I'm literally going to make my own monitor out of wood and coated with the technology. We made a glass. We got glass over there. A window. That's an old window we're using for a monitor. Yep. So, yeah, the white projection screen is still needed. Yeah, it's definitely still needed. Because, again, it's cheaper for me to paint over that than it is to paint over a gray screen. But is it going to give you what you think you're going to get from your projector? No, you're not going to get any of that. Batman versus Superman. Getting that from YouTube. Me. I love when I hear people saying movies were meant to be seen in the dark. Or what if I don't want to watch it in the dark? What if I want to watch it in a fully lit environment? I got a TV. TV wasn't meant to be watched in the dark all the time. If I want to watch Batman on my TV or on my cell phone, I can watch that right now. Fully lit environment with no problem. So I'm just subjected to being in the dark because I have a projector. But I don't have to do this on my phone or my monitor or a TV. How does that even work at the end of the day? How much money do you spend? Three grand, three thousand dollars for a projector. You mean to tell me my phone costs less than that, and I got to be stuck in a dark environment where my TV in the next room is running? Yeah, that's that's madness. Options. Transformer fight scenes. Getting that from YouTube. Understand. There's no time. I get guys that'll contact me. And they're happy about this screen. You know why? Because they can finally have that big screen that they wanted. Without going through the debate of I don't want to turn my living room into a cave. So problem they have is the lady of the house doesn't want to have her living room looking like a medieval dungeon that's why she decorated that way she can go down and she can sit down and look at all her pretty knickknacks and everything all the furniture she picked out and everything and she set all that up that living room pretty much is hers when you look at a house technically by the end of the day the only thing is yours is a garage and a basement if you're lucky but the garage pretty much will be yours the rest of the house is hers. She decorated the bathroom. She decorated the bedroom. She decorated the hallway. She decorated the kitchen. She decorated the living room. That's hers. That's all hers. Garage is yours at the end of the day. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Or anything out in the backyard that she has a garden out there, that's hers too. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, that, the majority of the house is hers. There you go. Unless you're lucky and you got a game room to yourself, then you're lucky. But most of the time, maybe no. So consider the fact that she's you, you can have that as a bargaining. Like, look. You got the entire house. I just have a garage. That's basically about it. And we just use that for the cars. How about you let me get a screen in here at least? Something. And at least if she bargains on the screen, the problem you're going to have is you're going to turn a living room into a medieval cave. And she's not going to be happy about coming into a living room. And every time she wants to watch something, they just replace their TV for a white projection screen or gray screen. And they're stuck in a dark environment. Not going to be happy about that. Our technology, guess what? You can have your 106-inch wallpaper screen sitting up there, and she can have her beautiful living room, have the lights on and all that, and you don't have to worry about your screen washing out. She can read a book in one section, you can watch a movie in another. Throw your wireless headsets on, and you're in your own little world right there on your big screen. And that's the kind of stuff we're trying to change.
for anyone who sits there and says, well, we do the same thing. We have so much testing under our technology. It is berserk. That's why I can come in and do that insane demonstration, turn all the lights out, hit it with a flashlight, all that stuff. So we do tons of testing. Tons and tons and tons of testing. We have to make sure that the product runs 100%. This is the reason why we're going to be on site in 40 over 40 different locations because we can back the product up. We're going to be just about everywhere with this stuff. But like I said, um, and on top of that, the batch number guarantee, extremely important. It's one of the most important things on anything. You have to have those tests. It's very important. You have to prove that product works. No comp it's not, not the customers won't even touch you. But no company will ever touch you unless you can show proof of it. Because if you can't, it, it, it's complicated. It gets extremely complicated. You know, I don't want to talk about legal things. And we're not going to talk about legal things on here. I said it already before. But when you're talking about a business, a company at the end of the day, and it says, hey, does this product do it exactly you said it does? And you're like, yes, are you sure about that? Because look, we signed a contract to this. It's going to get hairy if it doesn't. They will tell you that. So be upfront. Be honest with them. One of the places that um was we're thinking about doing a distributor with it's a company called i think projector screens whatever they were interested in our technology they wants to send down some stuff for them i decided that we do the screens instead of the paints because the paints get a little crazy so let's do the screens instead it's much easier to do screens and basically they are doing some kind of business overseas it's a lot easier to transfer screens than a chemical because i learned that the hard way when i was working with the digital and stuff but anyway the first thing the guy said to me says is this legit because we get a lot of these in here where people are claiming that their products are doing something that they're not. So is it legit? Does it do exactly as it's in the videos? You saw the videos, he was impressed, but he said, it's not enough for him. I have to see it in person. Send something to us so we can check it out. And send us a specification sheet. So see the stuff I do here? Where I show you against the white surface, we have the lights out, we have screens outside, all that stuff. Yeah, got to back that up. When I have customers that take a 300, uh, the, I don't know why I used it, but it still worked. I mean, it's amazing. But he used the, um, he was testing my screens. He had a ViewSonic and Epson in his demonstration, and he was using the WeMax uh, projector, and it worked on the gunmetal. See, that, that, he was testing our stuff. So the same thing that you do on your stuff, they're going to do the same thing back. We got customers that paint their entire walls and have the windows open, like we did in our demonstrations. We have screens outside. We have customers that paint screens outside to do the same thing we do. And when we go on site, again, it's not YouTube. I'm talking to somebody face to face and I'm having this conversation with them. So if I'm lying, they're going to find out right there on the spot, right in front of them. So that's why you want to make sure your stuff is tested and it works. And the company we're talking about, uh, we wanted to do the distribution with us. The first thing he said was, make sure your stuff works. Because if it doesn't, we won't touch it. So that's why you got to make sure it works. The fact that we we're able to tell them that we do back shimmers under our products made them happy. Uh, let me see. Well, we know white screen is going to do contrast, but giddy up. 8K desired nature. Getting that from YouTube. Hmm, did we even hit that thing? I don't think we even did. 8K Desired Nature. Getting that from YouTube. Oh, let me see. Where's Hamburger Hit at? Mr. Hamburger Head. Oh. So, yeah, we have to make sure our stuff is tested. I'm going to be contacting them back again because before we started with them, it was supposed to be screen paints, but now we're going to convert. We're doing screen paints, but I want to do screens instead. It's much easier. So we're going to do the wallpaper screens with them. Maybe the acoustics. Because the acoustics are 150 inches. And thing, you can ship them things anywhere, literally anything. I can ship a 150-inch acoustic and a post office mail it. Because it's a, it's a spandex material, it's stretchable, wrinkle-free. I think that's the best way to go. I think we go with those. Already pre-coated. We got the built-in grommets. Yeah, that would be a fantastic screen to do for a distributorship. I think we're going to do those. We're going to basically market those with them.
So now you can see we got our contrast and beautiful colors. Well, in the environment. Now I'm watching you 100%, buddy boy. I'm watching you, so stay right there. You gotta watch him, he's slick and fast. I'm watching you. Ah, uh, where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah, you. Where are you going? I watch him. He's slick. He's sitting there looking at me. And I'm staring right at him, trying to see if he's going. He ain't dart up there because he's afraid of the big cat. That's why he's not going up there. He's afraid of the big cat. But he's too curious, and I gotta watch him. He's fast. I'm watching. You know I'm watching you, right? I can see you creeping. I can see you creeping. Cut it out. Where are you at? Okay, that's it. I'm going to put you in your cage. I'm definitely going to put you in your cage. Guys. Yeah, right there. Stay right there. Watch you where you're at. He's creeping. I love how cats will sit there and stare you dead in the face and just walk real slow like you can't see them. They're a cloaking device. Back in ancient times, you will sacrifice just for a minute. Harvest. Well... I put him outside in his um, camper unit, his little unit he's in. And even when he's out there, he's fighting and carrying on. He don't want to be out there. So that's our contrast levels, open door, plenty of light pushing in. As I said before, when you're doing demonstrations with an open door, you literally have to be in the open door. Okay, tropical fish. I'm watching you, Goldilocks. Let me shut the door before he gets any crazy thoughts, because he does. And I'm seeing him looking at eye at the door like, oh, what are we doing? Nope, stay away from it. Trust him, he'll sneak out, get himself in some trouble. So as you can see, they're open, not gonna work with the white screen. Lights out, not gonna work with the white screen. Got a little light coming in here. The amount of lights, we had it in the dark, it's not gonna work. All right, where we at for time here? Whew, okay, we're doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good for time here. There we go. Now he's going to creep up to the door like, what? It was open? Yeah, it was open for a minute. It was open. Wait, what's that? What the heck is this down here? Oh, it's a... That's what it was. I'm going to try this one here. I like this right here. Some beautiful colors. And we did the outside already with the surface behind us. Well, actually, we're here now. Um, outside, the benefits of a white surface or white screen versus the black technology. We do a lot of those for outside projection setups. Uh, we're going to be getting a white screen with grommets. We're going to coat half of it with our technology, and then we're going to display it. Well, let me get my lights back on because, again, as you can see, lights on or off. 
doesn't make a difference. White screen's just not going to function at all, period. And customers I talk to, they want to be stuck in the dark all day. The only reason why I did the demonstration with the lights out, because again, we went to the form site, and there are people talking about, well, you know, it's going to work. We're going to be in the dark anyway. Yeah, that's a problem. When you're in the dark, you really think the screen's working, but it's not working. Now, if you take that white screen and stick it against a black diamond, you'd have seen the difference in that thing in a hot second. If you had put it against the gray screen versus the black diamond, definitely would have told the difference between that because that's what we saw when we were checking out, testing out their technology. Because it's a more higher superior screen. Why well, you take our technology and put it against a higher superior screen and our technology comes out ahead because again, our technology pulls the Infinity One. Reason the tremendously high white level, as I told you, the Heitner technology, Heitner, uh, the Heitner uh, Technology 5, as we showed you in the demonstrations at 50 lumens, we showed you thousand lumens it can read even with the lights on it can read at 50 lumens on the table it can read on the glass screen it can read at 50 lumens so if it reads at 50 lumens imagine a 300 lumen projector hitting the screen and that's what I'm curious about right now I talk about the gunmetal screens we are we do have our own gunmetal screen coming out but the difference between ours is our gunmetal technology we are engineer it to be better than all the other gunmetal screens which means we'll pick up a much darker shade of gray if you've ever seen our gunmetal technology they look nearly black they do look that close to being black they're not they're actually dark gray but they can pass for black screens but they're actually gray it's going to pick up tremendous insane white levels and it's going to be the most affordable gunmetal on the planet, which means that it's going to be marketed at under $300. Everything from, uh, we're going to do a 24, 32, and 1 gallon under $300 versus screens that are going to be anywhere in the range of $3,000, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 dollars screens. I can't express this enough. If you are going to give your product the title gunmetal, and before you can actually get that title, you have to go against actual certified gunmetal itself. And you can't use demonstrations in strictly dark environments because those screens are designed for much more than that. You have to be in fully lit environments like we're at right now. You're going to have to do white levels. You're going to have to do contrast levels. You're going to have to do color levels. And another thing that's very important also too, you have to do this on ultra short though because they do have their own set of ultra short though projection screens also. So that has to be done too. So that's a lot of testing. So you should at least under your gunmetal at least have a good maybe 30, 40, 50 videos, easily. As I showed you here, we just did demonstrations on white and gray. How many videos did we just upload? That's when I tell you, at the end of the day, they don't have enough test. And we just did a few demonstrations on the difference between a white surface and a gray surface. Lights off, lights on, 50 lumens, 4,000 lumens. You see what I'm getting at here? So when we say you don't have enough test, you don't have enough test. There's stuff missing. You should have a lot of demonstrations on it. A lot. I just did four videos today. Alone. On just this. I can't come on here and show you. Hey look, we got a white screen. We got a gray screen. Ta-da, a couple pretty colors. We're done. We can't do that. How does the color effect? How does the contrast effect? If I have it in a dark environment, how much light in the dark environment will affect the screen's capability? If I drop it at 50 lumens, or the white level is going to be the same here and there, or it's going to be the reaction of 50 lumens versus the white surface, or it's going to be the reaction for 4,000. So that tells the customer at the end of the day, if I use a high power projector at 4,000 lumens, I still can't read it on a white screen. But the black technology can read it. And if I put it at 50 lumens, I still can't read it. But the black screen can generate a white level and there's a white sheet of paper and the dark and it can do it with the lights on. That's why you have to go over all that. That's why the demonstrations take so long. That's why. And at least at the end of the day, if you do all these tests, you have 100% confidence in your product that anywhere you go, you can back it up. If you can back it up, then you can put batch numbers on it. You can put batch numbers on it. You can protect your product and also put a guarantee for your customers. So, you know, I heard somebody say, 
He shoots all those videos. You have to. You have to shoot all those videos. Think I want to, I'm about to come on here and just do one demonstration for everything and be done? Oh, well, that'd be fantastic, but I can't. I have to do these demonstrations. It's important. I couldn't imagine when the Wright brothers went in and tried to explain to people about the, the about flight. They can't just say, hey, this machine right here, you step on this and it, it goes over there. Can you imagine that? I'm like, wait, what? You gotta explain to me how all this works. Break it down to me. And I'm pretty sure it takes tons and tons and tons of presentations to do it. Shortcuts don't work. They never do. They just cause problems. Up for epic? Go a little harder. What we have for time? Go a little harder. For anyone who feels that we're using special effects in a live demonstration, I don't know how that would be possible, but are we using any form of live special effects? You know, at one time I was accused of using special cameras. Yep, special cameras. I don't have no idea what kind of camera I would have at the end of the day that could control a live stream. That'd be some crazy stuff. If I had that kind of technology, I wouldn't need to do this anymore. I'd be rich, super, super rich. You know why? Because every news media on the face of the planet would want that technology because you can edit real time can you imagine that what was that movie with the remote control when the guy with adam sander with the remote control be, no it was no it wasn't be kind rewind that was just something else with the video game store the video store but yeah we can control everything with the remote control if that was the case and keep in mind i'm on site so when i'm on site all that has to work if it doesn't work then it's going to be problems people are going to other people are going to see it besides me but here we go. So if I upload this video, it'll be the same as the video you're watching right here. There you go. If I was doing special effects on my phone, I can't be in a live stream. And number one, I can't be on site. That's virtually impossible. If I'm turning the phone or some kind of brightness on my phone to make it super bright so I can do that, how would I do that if I'm on site and I got other people looking at it? same screen as I'm looking at. How would I do that? This is the settings in my phone. Let's see. High efficiency video. That's not on. Never turn that on. Video stabilizer. Yeah, because I move a lot. Look at that, auto HDR, that's turned off too. All that talk. Only thing on here is local tags, that's it. And shutter, that's on, that's it. But all the other spe all the other things, so. No, I don't have anything like that on my phone to begin with. And again, I can record. Show you my demonstration right here. I just did and just recorded it right in front of you. So why that's so bogus and stupid at the end? I gotta be on site. I'm not going to be the only one staring at that screen. There are going to be other people watching the screen besides me. Unless I got some kind of man in black technology where I can erase people's minds and make them believe what I just recorded. I don't have anything like that. So it's real. 
when people see something better or they see something that's going to change things they will try everything in their power to keep it from coming to life well we're going to be there we've been there for many years anyway but we're going to go to that next stage we're going to make this we're going to open this up so everybody sees it And I'll tell you something. I love companies. And you know what I love? Um, I love Cricket and Metro. A lot of people don't understand things about Cricket and Metro. Before Cricket and Metro, you had to pay for your minutes. Remember paying for minutes on your cell phone and all that crazy stuff you had to pay for? Minutes, minutes, minutes. You had to wait till a certain amount of time. Minutes were cheaper and all that stuff. And sometimes you get a day for free or whatever after a certain hour. Remember that madness and all that craziness? Buying minutes? Well, when Metro came out, when I remember, I had Metro when it first came out, I was in there buying minutes for my, my Razor phone. And the guy was telling me, hey, there's this company coming out called Metro. And they have unlimited data. They have unlimited talk time. I was like, wait a minute. Because if you want an unlimited talk time on Verizon and the big companies, you want to pay some serious money. And I remember hearing about that. I said, really? I said, yeah. I said, wait, I can talk as much as I want. Can you imagine? I talk as much as I want. And I don't have to worry about paying for the minutes or anything. Like, nope, as much as you want. So when they came out, I got one of their phones. Matter of fact, I got one in sewage. The first phones they came out, I got one. It's a red flip phone that I bought from them. And yeah, it was true. Unlimited minutes, as much as you want. Talk as much as you want all day long. Never worry about that. At the time, the cell phone towers weren't all that great. They were a little bit, eh. They're much better than way better now. But before they weren't all that great. And then later on, Cricket came out. And Cricket had better towers than Metro. Metro did upgrade the towers, and the towers became extremely good. But Cricket was much better. And Cricket also, too, had unlimited talk time. So with these companies out, the bigger companies like Horizon and AT&T that were charging for minutes also had to fall in line and do the exact same thing that these companies were doing, or they would become obsolete. Which means now, because of these two companies, you have unlimited talk time instead of paying for minutes. There you go. So instead of you paying tons and tons of money for your projectors and screens and all these things at the end of the day that you really don't have to pay for, we're going to make it so, so that way you can buy an affordable screen, no expensive projectors, no dark environments, and all that other crazy stuff that comes with it. It takes a few people to change things. That's what it does. But you are going to have people that are going to fight against you on these things at the end of the day. And we're in it for the fight. And we're in it for the long haul. So we are going to get it to a point that we're going to have technology at $100. That'll do things that $4,000, $5,000 projection screens and TVs at the end of the day won't be able to do. We're going to get it to that point. All right, people. Thank you so much. Got to go and God bless.